I loved what he had to say. I listened to it two or three times. I just loved times. how he I, said it. He was just mad. punching He's you with just, each word. He was right there. And, and it brought up a lot of things that people that have never played the game never thought about. So you have a few minutes, two, three minutes, whatever it is, when the national anthem is playing. And the minute that's done, like, you're going to battle. And I don't think we realize how much is probably going through your heads when you're sitting there and you're preparing for the game and it's the only amount of, the only, like, beat of, of, of like, solitude you will have for the next the three or four hours. Could you both talk about what he was referring to and, and what those few minutes right before the game is like for you? And are you thinking about the national anthem or are you thinking about a million other things? There are several moments that when you retire from this game, people ask you, what do you miss? And you always miss the locker room because the group of individuals You'll never be a part of such a unique, broad, young, affluent, ambitious group the rest of your life. Like, we're very, very fortunate to have long careers. And, and we've gone on to do other jobs and have another career. But M Mark will tell you, it's nothing like being in the NFL. There's two big moments before the game. One is when you bow and say the Lord's Prayer in the locker room. Mm -hmm. And then the referee knocks on the door and tells you you got two minutes to get to the field. Once you get to the field, I was taught by Buddy Ryan from my first game. He showed us a clip where he was videotaping the national anthem. He said, if you want to get a fast way out of Philadelphia, disrespect the national anthem. Don't have your helmet in, in, in your right arm underneath you don't have your toes on the line I will cut you if I can cut you in the middle of the game I'll cut you in the middle of the game but if I see the film after the game I'll cut you immediately after the game now as far as the national anthem because only a few people play this play this game to me that was the moment where yes it meant something to me I was so proud to be an American so proud for the opportunity it's presented to me and my family through football the next thing I would do was always say a prayer because you're a fool to think that you can go into an NFL game and not lose your life. I used to tell God, I want to go into this game and I want to come out of this game. I was praying for the safety of every player. I never prayed for success. I prayed for the safety of every man on that field that we could walk off that field afterwards. So the national anthem, it does play a huge role in the NFL and in getting ready for a game. But the transition from hearing that song to what you're getting ready to go through, the physical combat for the next three hours, it's a tough transition. And there's a lot of things going through your mind. But for me, it was about being safe and about being thankful for the opportunity that football was presenting to me. I, you know what? I couldn't say it any better. You guys have to understand that for me throughout my career, there was never a game, including preseason games, that I didn't vomit in a trash can before I went out to play. Yes. I was so nervous about, you know, not only my performance, but most importantly, not letting my teammates down. Like, not making a mistake that cost us a game. I just was so nervous about playing this game. It didn't matter who I was playing against, and it didn't matter if it was preseason. I will throw up in a trash can. That's just the way it was. And going out. What was happening back here before yes, you got Yes, I was on having set? earlier. Right. Yes, I, I, it's sure. just a tradition now. Um, <laughs> but as as I went out and took the field, now you have to remember there was, I don't know how many national anthems I ever actually went out for because this is this is something during the course of our career that not partial. everybody did it. Yeah, it yes. was it was a partial thing. So. Um, I don't you were, you're saying during your career, during, some of the time you guys stayed well, in the locker required. room. Right. No, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. You know, there was a. There's this whole paid for patriotism aspect right. to the national anthem. Where I don't know that it, when I was in Washington that we ever actually went out for a national anthem. I don't remember doing. I remember doing some playoff games. But I don't remember being out there for. I know it I played three. Was for you wanted the extra time, or you just didn't? I, I just. They didn't even. They didn't. The they just didn't have us go out. It was just the way it was. It became um, league-wide, I believe, in 2009. Right. I think it was up to each and I think right. with up the to each deal team. with the Department of Defense, if I'm not right. mistaken. So go ahead. But I just but when I when I was out there, man, it was a it was a time like Chris said, it was a time to honor our country and to be thankful for the opportunity. And the opportunity is this: not that I wasn't scared, but the opportunity was I got to live out my childhood dream. 
And since the time I was 12, the only thing I ever wanted to be was a football player. And that comes with sacrifice. And so you're thankful for that. And, and as Chris said, you know, your prayers and, and praying for safety. And um, I'm 100% with you on all that stuff because you understand. I mean, there was never a game that I went into that I felt good. I used to pray before no. I went in my locker room. No. Before I left the locker room, I would be in my locker. And I used to have this imaginary jar that I would pray, just hold my pain. Just let me play efficiently for the seven seconds that I have to play. I'll accept it in the huddle, and I'll accept it after the play. But just let me be there for my teammates for these seven seconds for 65 plays that I can play well for those guys. And then I'll gladly accept it when I come back in the locker room, and I'll gladly accept it for the rest of the week. But just give me the opportunity to go out there and perform for these guys. Because ultimately, for me, is every guy that I ever played with, every guy that worked at the organization that I, mm. that I worked for was more important than me. And that's how I've tried to live my life. And so that's, that's when I stood there, I thought about all the other people that have sacrificed so that I could play this game. And that's what it, what it was for me. Mark, did you think about, and we asked CC this yesterday, did you think about how you would handle the situation? I mean, it's a, I'm sure something a lot of former players sure. Are dealing with now what you would do if it, listen, you were still I, playing listen, today? You know, I hear so many people talk about, um, it, you know, it's an affront to the anthem. It's a, uh, you know, disrespectful to the flag. You know, what's disrespectful to the flag is that we live in a society where we don't love each other. That's disrespectful. We live in a society where we have never been more connected from a technology standpoint and less connected as people. I walked through the streets of New York yesterday and I almost got run over 15 times because people are doing this. While they're walking through the streets, there's no contact. We. I was sorry, and I feel like you right. just keep bringing no, it up. No, no. We I apologize like four times. But so. it, like we, we're not connected. That's an affront mm -hmm. to this country. Right. You know, I, I heard Greg Popovich say this, and it broke my heart. You know, my dad never told me, "Hey, if you get pulled over by police, yeah, you know, if you get pulled over by police, this is how you act." You know that as a white guy, I've never told my kids. I've never even thought about it. Never crossed my mind. Greg Popovich said this, and I've talked to several people since. He said, every black friend that I have has told their kids how to act and how to behave if the police pull you over or the police, you know, confront you. That's a sad, that's a sad statement on where we are as a country. And for me, it's, it's about recognizing that there are inequalities in this country. And it's not about disrespecting the flag. It's about saying, hey, this is not right. And what are we going to do about this? And for the people who say, well, listen, you know, um, it's not the right place at the right time. Well, what is the right place at the right time? Where you there can't you see it so it doesn't make, so it doesn't make an impact yeah. on you? It, what would have happened, uh, what would have happened if Rosa Parks gave up her seat and then just wrote a strongly worded letter to the bus company? Nothing. Mm -hmm. Nothing would have happened. Unless we're uncomfortable about it, unless we're honest about it, unless we look at it from, through that prism, and, and unless we have compassion and kindness and love in our hearts, then nothing is going to change. Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from First Things First or go watch a few segments from our other shows on FS1.